In this video, we're going to cover some of the most common errors that you get when you're importing or refreshing your Excel data into your Power BI reports. We're going to go through each of the errors, why it's happening, and how you can resolve this so that you can fix it yourself in the future. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So connecting your Power BI reports to your Excel data is typically one of the first ways that you would use or interact with Power BI. It's a very simple and straightforward process to do so. However, as you continue working with Excel data and Power BI, you might encounter some issues, not very uncommon, as you work through as changes to your data happen in your Excel, or maybe some changes to your Power BI that might have caused it. So today we're going to cover some of the most common issues that you might encounter and what causes them and also how you can fix them for yourself. So the first one that I want to show you is this error. Now I don't get this error anymore, but I used to get it a lot in the past and I didn't quite understood what this meant. So so the error is about not having the 64-bit version of Access Database installed in the local machine, which is easily resolved by simply just following this link here on the error box, which will give you a place to download and install the Access Database that Power BI needs in order to read and fix this error. However, an easier way for you to fix this is by just converting your Excel files from an XLS type format into to a workbook type format, .xlsx. So basically the XLS type format of Excel file is an older version of Excel. I believe it's the 2000 version and it requires the Access Database Engine to read data in this file type. Now you can basically solve this issue by just converting it to a workbook, the, the modern version of Excel, and you won't get this issue anymore. And by the way, it's not the only extension that you might get an error for something like this. The .xlsb type Excel format as well will not work when you're pulling data from Excel into Power BI. So if you're not familiar with those file types, you shouldn't really need to worry about it. But uh, the XLSB is the type of Excel formats where you can have macros in them. So if you are getting these type of errors, just understand that it will be because of the file type of your Excel file. So the next issue that I want to show you is how you deal with your data changing. What I mean is when your columns get added, removed, or headers renamed. So let's try to use an example here just to show you what I mean. So I'm gonna bring in one data set here, which is from an Excel sheet here. We'll use the, this one orders. We'll go transform and then we'll just, we'll, we'll just update it to load it properly. So we're gonna use first row as headers because it's not recognized as a sheet as uh, the headers and then we're going to convert all of these into the right data format so detect data type here and then we'll hit close and load so that's how you would typically import data from excel into power bi so you'll have all of your data here in the right data format but now what happens if your data changes so let's open up that same file and let's say we wanted to change, uh, let's say we decided, okay, we don't actually want the total sales here to be named total sales. We want it to be named as sales, easy. So all we have to do is save, and then now let's refresh the report here. Here we go. So you see it, where the issue starts to happen is um, because the the change of the column has happened. Any steps that are referencing those column headers gets unlinked. So you don't it doesn't understand what total sales mean anymore. So the easiest way for you to resolve this is by using tables or connecting to tables instead of sheets. So what do I mean by that? So when we when we brought in the Excel workbook for the first time, 
you'll see that you had two options here. You had an option to bring in a sheet, which is this icon, or bring in a table. So table uh, and using tables in general is a, a good best practice because you are bringing in the table that is converted as a table in Excel, So which means we don't need to do the promotion of the column headers. It already knows what the column headers are. But also another thing is that if you have any new columns or if you have any changes Changes to your names, the tables will update accordingly. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. So I'm going to bring in the table here and then we're going to hit load. Okay, that's fine. So I think it's just because we have this query here and I just want to delete it for now. Let's hit close and load. So now you have the table brought in. So first of all, I'm just going to demonstrate to you. So now in this, if we change this to total sales, if we hit the refresh button here, you'll see that that changes. And then if we add a new column, for example, we want to add sales here, just as an example, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm just going to bring in just a copy of the total sales. If I hit the refresh button here, you see, I don't have to do anything else. It just automatically gets brought into my Power BI report. Just one thing to note about tables is that they're not usually set up. So uh, you'll know if a sheet has a table, if you click on the table itself and the table design comes up like this. It means that this is a table. The table name that we are bringing in is this one. So the name here, it should be the same as the one in the Power BI report. So table one, but if probably you'd want to rename this into something more meaningful. If you have a sheet that is not converted into a table, it's very simple. Actually, you just need to select all of the data in your sheet and then click format as table, select any of these, and it will just convert those that table or that sheet, that part of the sheet into a table. The next thing that you might encounter is something like this. So you might get something like this where it's trying to find a file in some directory, but it can't find it. Now it typically happens when someone shares you a Power BI file along with a source, but obviously since the source is a local source, the Excel file, you need to change to where Power BI is pointing to in order to, in order for Power BI to know where that file is. So if you get an error like this, you simply need to go to file options and settings, data source settings. And then from here, you will, you might have multiple data sources here, but just find the one that was showing up on the error, hit change source and look for the file that you want to link to. So for example, here, I just have it in my desktop. So I'm just going to double click it, just give it the right path. As long as the file is the same, or at least in the format that Power BI expects, your refresh should work just fine. The next thing that typically happens uh, if you're working for, you know, companies internationally is with the dates or the local dates. So let's bring in one date data here. Here we go. I'm going to bring in this one sheet and actually we're not going to bring it in. We're just going to look at it here in the Power Query editor. So use first rows headers. And typically what we do is we highlight everything, hit transform and detect data type. Now what you'll notice is the detect data type checks what the data is in each row of that column and then assigns a data type to it. If it can't understand some of them, it will just leave them as the default, which is this one, ABC123. So what happens here or what happened here is that the dates are, some of them are recognized, but some of them aren't. And that's because the formats that we have them in Excel is in the US format, which starts with month, day, year. Now, because I'm based in the UK, our format is day, month, year. So the ones that are indented to the right hand side, it's recognized that it's in the right format. However, these three dates, for example, they are in the US format. So to resolve this, it's actually very simple. You just need to go to the change uh, data format here, the header icon, then you need to select using locale. So that will bring this box here that will let you change the data type here, which we can choose as date. And then you can change the locale of this change step. So instead of using the locale, the US or sorry, the UK, we're going to use the US English United States. So if you hit OK, there we go. So as you can see, now that column is changed into a date type column. 
with all of its dates properly recognized. So now let's work with one other example here. I'm just gonna remove all of the other tables. Let's bring in one last sheet here, which is this sheet. So I'm gonna bring in one of these, either the table or the order. So as you can see, no issues. If we hit, actually let's leave it to sheets, hit transform, and let's try to do our own uh, manipulation here. So if we do use first rows headers and select all, and then let's do the tech data type. As you can see, there's no issues here, no errors happening. It looks like everything is fine. Now, if we hit close and apply, you'll see that you might hit an error or something like this where it's found an issue where you didn't see it in the Power Query Editor. So if you click on the view errors here, it will open up Power Query Editor and it will tell you that on row 2156, there is an issue here. So it has some values here that isn't expecting. So these columns are number type columns, but in this row, for example, there is some entry with a text, but it's weird because when we were editing it here on the transform step, it didn't detect it. And that's because we have our Power Query by default only profiles the first 1000 rows of your data. So when we did all of our steps here, promotion, changing types, it only checks the row data up to the first 1000 rows. So it didn't really detect the issue that we had with the data because it is on row 2100. And so the first thing is obviously to change the limit. You can change it from the bottom here. Instead of column profiling based on the top 1000 rows, you can choose the column profiling based on the entire data set. And when I select that, as you can see, now it recognizes that there were issues in that data. So there are a few ways to fix it. Obviously the easiest way is to fix it on the source, but you also have the option to remove or replace errors. So what I would typically do, because sometimes you don't know where the errors will happen, I will do select all on all of my columns. We'll do transform and then replace values, but don't click the replace values, choose replace errors. So we're saying that we want to replace any errors with empty, null. So we don't really remove the rows, but we just replace that value with empty, just so that we don't have any errors. So if you've done that and you've created your replace, now, if we go back to that query that Power BI generated to us, if it's empty, then you've resolved all of the errors in your query. So just make sure that you delete that since you won't really need it anymore and you should be good to go. And that's really it for this video. I hope I covered some of the most common issues that you might have when importing Excel data into Power BI, but if you are encountering any more errors or some common issues that I missed, leave it in the comment section box below so the other people can know what it is and potentially how to fix it. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.